Hi guys! Welcome back from the break. That was Annixi with Glam and Fab. Shout out to her. Now, for the next segment, you're going to be with me. I'm Susan Jaroge and I'm going to be taking you through conversations with. Today, I'm so excited because we're talking about music, music videos, films, and censorship. Well, this week I am going to be discussing all of that and so much more with none other than Dr. Ezekiel Mutua. You guys sometimes call him a party pooper? Well, I don't know. I will be discussing it with him on KTN Life and Style's virtual conversations with. So tweet us using the hashtag KTN Life and Style and I'm going to see you between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. right on KTN Home. I am going to be speaking to Dr. Ezekiel Mutua. He is the CEO of the Kenya Film Classification Board. You guys all know him if you do not know him in your Kenyan. I don't know. I don't know. You've been, you've been living under a rock or so. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, good morning, Mr. Ezekiel. How are you? Very well, uh, Susan. Good to see you. Good to see you too. I made a mistake once. I said Mr. Ezekiel and it should be Dr. Mutua. No, and people are done up with It's very serious. Uh, it takes a lot of time, though. It does. You can imagine. <laughs> Actually, um, your first degree is in sociology and linguistics, correct? Absolutely, from Kenyatta University. Yes. Now, when you do linguistics, I'm guessing you study a language. Which language did you do? Absolutely. Kiswahili, English, <laughs> and oh. the sociology. Okay, awesome. Um, so the conversation we're going to be having today, guys, our topic is the positive and negative effects on music censorship and film censorship in our society. Um, but before we get there, of course, there's a lot of things that trend in you, Dr. Mutua, as somebody who trends often <laughs> ever since you were the CEO of KFCB. Um, and, but in line with that, there was something quite interesting that happened recently. Um, there's a comedian, Moulamwa, who decided that he was going to quit comedy. He had experienced a lot of bullying from trolls online, and he just, he was like, it's too much. I think it's time for me to step aside. But you had a different take on it. You actually told him to reach out to you and that you would be willing to support him and offer mentorship and even buy him a new shirt because he had burnt his comedic shirts that we all know of. Um, what has happened with that? Have you guys been in conversation? Is he still set on quitting? Did he reach out to you? What happened there? Yeah, he did. I reached out to him and uh, uh, we spoke. We had a very good conversation. Uh, unfortunately, I think the bullying, the social media bullying had brought him down and he had to uh, take a break. He was very low. I unfortunately discovered that uh, that they had also lost a baby. They yeah. were going through hard time, so we gave him time to, uh, you know, uh, come back and uh, at least relax a bit and find his bearing again. And uh, of course, the promise stands that if uh, uh, once he relaxes mm -hmm. and he has found his bearing and he wants to come back, we can relaunch him, we can get him a new shirt, we can rebrand him, and we can support him to grow again. Uh, he's been involved in, in a lot of drama, of course. Uh, that is a bit. Uh, disturbing and hopefully uh, when he comes back he can uh, he, he can he can put his act together and uh, and compose uh, or make comedy that is clean that is identifying and the role that we want him to play is uh, actually to be an ambassador of clean content hopefully uh, we can mentor him and coach him there is uh, there is no money in that content really and uh, it doesn't last that fame comes and goes and a lot of uh, comedians and artists and being thrown into these things for hype, uh, just to create a name. Uh, but a name in its own, without money, without an income, sustainable income, is not worthy the, the, the trouble. So what we are encouraging people like Molamwa to do is uh, you are gifted, you are talented. So why don't you use that talent uh, to create content that is good for society, that uh, parents can watch with their children, that uh, touches on our values, on our culture, and uh, things in society in a positive way. Okay, cool. That's great. That's awesome. I'm glad you guys had that conversation. He's actually been on the KTN Life and Style show before, so I'm so happy that you talked to him and that you're trying to get him back because I would really love him to come back as well. Um, but yeah, Mulamwa, you take your time um, with your girlfriend and your family and all the best to you, and we are very excited to have you back in comedy. Um, now, speaking of clean content there of course is the recent the most recent um song by ethic that was banned 
and it was due to content that you believe that was not clean, that was very derogatory. Um, and a lot of other people on Twitter actually had the same to say about it. Um, but what I wanted to ask you is when these things happen, when, when, when a film has to be banned or when a song has to be banned and you, look, you particularly look like, you know, you look like the bad guy, you look like the guy who's trying to stop getting it told um, on Twitter. How do you usually deal with that as a person and how, how do you usually go about making those decisions at KFC? Uh, there's a very uh, clear procedure and guidelines that guide uh, uh, content classification. As a matter of fact, I'm not the one who clar classifies content. Uh, we have a classification department, examination and the classification department. It is uh, embedded in the Fumes and Strange Place Act, Cap 222 of the Laws of Kenya, which establishes the Kenya Film Classification Board. And uh, within that uh, uh, department, Mm -hmm. There is provision in the law for co-opting members of the public, uh, people with different expertise in education, in psychology, in law, in journalism. And uh, the whole idea is to ensure that uh, uh, when we are rating and classifying content, there's objectivity and government cannot curtail uh, freedom of expression uh, using yeah. the law. And so we have these people are co-opted. Most of them are young lawyers. They are young journalists. They are young educationists. And they come in to rate and classify content and they go away. They are not employees of the board. And so that is supposed to grieve or to provide or to, 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 to ensure objectivity and professionalism in the manner in which we do the work. So right. once they have rated, they go away, they give me the report. As the spokesperson of the organization and the accounting officer, I make uh, then uh, the decision to announce uh, what they have rated. Uh, obviously, there are conversations that came, come to the public, and I do yeah. comment. But yeah. once I make my comments, I give guidelines, mm -hmm. and I ask the classification department to, uh, to, to examine the content and give me the technical uh, advice on uh, where we stand with it. And if it's content that is unpalatable, that is not good, that needs to be pulled down, we liaise with other organizations, including Google, including DCI, including Communications Authority of Kenya, and we ensure that it's brought down. The procedure for rating content mm -hmm. is a very scientific, Susan. It's not something that you wake up and just declare, you know, you're using the Bible, thou shall not show, uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> no, it's a very scientific process where you look at the frequency and the intensity of classifiable elements okay. in, a, in, a, in a field. Uh, and the intensity and, and, and the frequency uh, looks at, uh, how, 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 how deep, how disturbing, how frequent, for instance, are these classifiable elements to mm -hmm. determine, therefore, the age appropriateness of the kind of content that is going to be shot. Uh, therefore, if it is, because the classifiable elements include uh, bad language or far language, yeah. uh, horror, obscenity, nudity, elements like those, and depending on the intensity and frequency, mm -hmm. they, it's rated very scientifically. Okay. And uh, depending on how, how frequent they appear in the chat, uh -huh. it's rated either general exhibition or parental guidance or not suitable for this age or the oh, other. Okay. And it's done very scientifically. It's not something that you wake up and just declare this is not fit. It is done by professionals. It is done scientifically. And they rate and uh, on the scale of one to five, they say either this is mild or this is, uh, you know, just soft. For example, let me give you a practical example. Mm -hmm. In a film, if mm -hmm. there's a violence, if there's violence and there's a spilling of blood, right. somebody is, you know, cut and blood is gushing out, uh -huh. and you are seeing a pool of blood flowing. That is not good for children. Right. A child, a young child is not. It's not good for a young child to see, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the blood flowing uh, from human body. But if it is just a prick and uh, you know in the fraction of seconds and it passes mm -hmm. it may not be a big deal so depending on how frequent and how intense you yeah. rate it suitable for this or not the other if for instance it's about uh, nudity or a romantic scene for instance and then you start moving from one scene a boy meets a girl then they move from one point then they yeah. kiss then they do this then they move on and they, it's not necessary to give us those details uh, you can still show that kind of uh, film 
without going into the details uh, until you show what would consider inappropriate uh, inappropriate yeah. in um, in terms of public viewing so um, if you go deeper then we we'll rate it for adults yes you know but yes. if it is just a scene where a boy meets a girl nothing wrong with that yeah. uh, we will allow it and so that is done very scientifically so the decisions are scientific they're guided by the law unfortunately um, because i'm the spokesperson i take the flag a lot of people think that it's me who ban no it's not always like that <laughs> um, I do create conversations, obviously. You, yeah. you have to be seen to be responsive. Mm -hmm. Because again, Kenya, K Kenyans are very judgmental. If there's something out there in the public domain and you keep quiet and you're the regulator, yeah. they will think the government yeah. is not responsive. So one of the things I do as the CEO of the board and the spokesperson is to say we have received these complaints and we are looking at them. Um, when we look at um, Kenyan culture, and I like that you said that you'd also like to protect Kenyan children from certain content. So if it's just for adults, only adults should be able to access it. If we think that it is yes, yes. not appropriate for children, then it is to be restricted and make sure that children can't reach it. Um, when we talk about some of these films like uh, Rafiki, or we talk about Genge Tone, some of the new um, rap music that's coming out of Kenyan, the Kenyan music industry, there's Awesome, great music, the, the industry is growing, which is incredible for people like you and for people like me, because we have more work and we see the industry developing and it's wonderful. Um, but some of the content that is created, where we talk about art imitates life, right? Um, so artists talk about things that they see and things that they experience. And some of these films and some of this music are things that are happening in our Kenyan society. So I wanted to ask you about, um, with some of these Genge Tone artists, have there ever been conversations held where you can talk to them about their experiences? Because if a lot of their music is even cited to be as bad as pornography, like some of their music videos, are we having conversations with those young people to find out about what's happening with them, what's going on with their culture? Um, how can we help them understand that, fine, this is wrong, but if they're singing about it, it means it's happening. Yeah, you're right, Susan. Uh, yeah, we do talk. We do talk. Part of our mandate is actually to create awareness, mm -hmm. to engage with our stakeholders. And our stakeholders are creators like Negaton. They are creators like filmmakers. Yeah. So um, principally, we are supposed to uh, constantly engage with them. Mm -hmm. You realize that the work of a regulator is not a very popular job. You will always be, just like they said, I talked about the traffic police, uh, you'll be telling people, no, you know, uh, stop here. Uh, let me check your car. And uh, sometimes it's not comfortable. People think you are you interrupting their lives. Yeah. You are interfering with their creation. Mm -hmm. uh, I wish they would come to us, and I wish they would know that we are a board that established is established for them, not against them, and that right. we are not at war with them. The government exists to regulate. And I always give an example of like Kenya Bureau of Standards. You can imagine to Susan, if the water that you buy in a kiosk or soda, mm -hmm. if there was no government that is vetting, Mm -hmm. You would have no confidence going to buy soda in a kiosk and trust that this is really soda. Left to their own devices, right. business people would become unscrupulous and they would put all manner of concoction in those bottles. Yeah. The government exists for the public. And our role as a regulator is to the consuming public, yes. the consumers of content. If you want to get into this business as a creator, mm -hmm. the first thing you need to do is to read the laws that govern this sector. That's what every business person does. Right. Even the young fellow, illiterate, who is setting up a kiosk by the roadside in Karatina or wherever to sell tea. They don't just say, oh, I'm creative, I'm creative. I am a young person, government needs to support me, nobody should interrupt me. They, by the time they start setting up that kiosk mm -hmm. to sell tea, they know there is NEMA, they know there is Minister of Health, because you can just set up a kiosk by the roadside, sell whatever you want, and the non-government is vetting your operations. Okay. Same with the guy who is setting up a mechanic uh, shop. They, they, they will obey certain rules. And by the time they think of going into that area, mm -hmm. they read about the laws governing that area. You can't just start a mechanic, uh, you know, workshop outside somebody's residential building and no. start congaring tumor there and making noise. <laughs> you will know that there's name and they to reckon... I don't know why creatives don't want to obey the law and they think they can just come into the scene, create whatever they want, and government should not talk about it. Mm -hmm. What would happen if we allowed the other sectors to do the same? 
what would happen if we allowed the guy who's making coffins or tables or furniture or whatever nature to set up outside a residential building and start making noise for the residents? Yeah. What would you say about government? If the government says, okay, they're also creatives, they're also talented, they're also young people, they also want to make money, there must be law and order. And if you are getting into the creative economy, mm -hmm. please read about Fumes and Stage Plays Act understand the laws governing that area. If you are creating content for uh, adults, please indicate it for adults. And don't let the media not show it during the watershed period. Mm -hmm. Because during the watershed period, which is five in the morning yeah. to 10 in the evening, that yeah. is supposed to be family time. Yeah. The content shown within that time is not supposed to have scenes or to have language that is offensive or that, can, uh, that is not suitable for the family. Right. So it's a collaborative effort, but yes, we are reaching out to the musicians. We have now talked to Gwengeton. We've asked them to report to our office. They are in the 14 days from last week. I hope they obey the law and come to our offices because uh, once you break the law, uh, I think you should be decent enough to just engage and ensure that we resolve that issue. If they oh, do so not come... It, sorry, just to clarify, this is the group that sang the latest band song, the Soko song that was sung by Epic Entertainment. Yes, yes, we, we asked to Google to take it down and they did but the offense was still committed and we cannot allow them to operate like they are above the law once you break the law like I've said if you're driving your car and it's not roadworthy and the police yeah. the traffic police you have pulls you here. aside True. they find you have no insurance cover they will charge you Very so true. don't start saying oh now I bought insurance you were driving a car you are endangering people's lives yeah. and you didn't have an insurance yeah. They never submitted this music for examination and classification in line with the law. So we want to engage with them, and hopefully in future they will change. Our desire is to see them reform and do content that is appropriate, because they are talented. That is not, there's no denying that. But there's a challenge about, there's a problem about the kind of content they are creating. Okay. Um, now, Dr. Mutua, you are also a father. <laughs> as well as all of the other things that you do. So I have to ask, how has it been working from home and socially distancing for you and your family? Has there been anything, any unique experiences that you've had at home that you otherwise wouldn't have had? No, it hasn't been amazing for us. I, I had a conversation with my youngest son yesterday who is in Light Academy. Uh -huh. And uh, you know, I was asking him, how are you? Are you faring? How are you doing these things? And I was so impressed because he told me, you know, that I don't watch a lot of stuff. I don't want to stress myself about when schools will open yeah. or things that I have no control about. So he, I was so happy to see that he's managing himself in terms of the content he consumes. All of us on technology, my other son is in the university. He's the, all of us are doing their own things in our different rooms. Yeah. Uh, the mother is the, right now, as we speak, uh, conducting our own meetings. Uh, you know, in, in another room. And, uh, and it, it has been really wonderful. In fact, for us, it's a blessing in this case. We've never had the time that we have. Uh, okay. The last, I've been married for 23 years, and this is the best time of our lives. Oh, that, that's so nice. We've never been together like this. It just the exigencies of work and life could yeah. not allow us to have as much time together, to share a meal together, to be able to interact and see each other so much. Uh, for us, uh, I say it's a blessing in disguise that we are enjoying it. Oh, that's awesome. That's so great to hear. I think people need a lot more positive uh, like affirmations at this time because I'm just like your younger son. At one point, it was too much. I just was like, you know what? I'm yeah. going to keep up with how the numbers are moving for coronavirus. I will keep up on Twitter and watch, but I'm, I'm not going to read. You know, all the articles that are being shared, on WhatsApp all the yes. time, and it, it, it got to a point where it was too much for me because I was getting so sad. And then I was just sitting in that sadness yeah. and we still have to move on and there's still a lot we can do from home. And everybody needs to have their own coping mechanism. I mean, this tragedy, this pandemic is really a, a big tragedy. And a lot of people, you know, we need to, I, the reason I keep talking to him because he's, uh, uh, he's, he's 14 now, mm -hmm. uh, is, uh, is, is uh, that, that age is the way he has, he can absorb all manner of uh, uh, stuff on technology, on, yeah. uh, on, on social media. Uh, yeah. but, but, but he's such a disciplined guy, you know? So, so, so the, the, but I, my, my desire is to see that everyone has their own coping mechanism. 
because yeah. we can come together as a family and watch a movie and there's a program that uh, you know uh, is yeah. followed and then uh, i like seeing them watching a movie together and and then and, 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 uh, you know you can find in the evening the lights are off and the house the the the, the sitting room is turned into a theater a cinema a <laughs> very fascinating very nice but I think uh, all, all Kenyans, and I, and, I, and I pray that parents will take responsibility, watch what their kids are watching, you know, monitor what their kids are watching, uh, have conversations with their kids, ensure that they guide them as they engage with the gadgets. Because right now, because, of, uh, because schools are closed, they have to have these gadgets as a matter of necessity. Yeah. Please don't just give them the gadgets. Ensure that there's a conversation. Talk okay. to them. Let them know that technology is a double-edged sword. Uh, it's not every kid who is a responsible as, as responsible as my son. Some of them <laughs> get tempted to veer into other things, yeah. and therefore uh, parents have a duty right now to ensure that they engage with their children, they guide them, and they support them to ensure that they do not get into mental uh, uh, depression. When it comes to you personally, is there anything that you have found has been a little tough or has been a little bit harder during this time for social distancing? Yes, yes, yes. Um, I have parents who are over 100 years old, and uh, I like visiting them. I like engaging with them. Now I can't do that. And uh, one of the challenges I've had is uh, a lot of their great grandchildren and their, their great children came back from home manner of places. Everywhere. And they yeah. want to visit. They want to visit their homestead and have to keep telling the caretaker to not allow them. And you can imagine how bad it is, how it feels when you're blocking relatives from accessing their own uh, parents and grandparents. Yeah. Uh, but I to tell them, listen to what, uh, what the ministry is announcing, what the government is saying, that if you are coming from outside, you can bring, and these are old people, they're more yeah. susceptible to the infections. Yes. Uh, so my greater challenge has been uh, uh, managing that situation, taking care of the, my old parents and the blocking even relatives, the younger, everyone else situation. from going in. Yeah, you know they are coming innocently. They they don't mean any, any harm, but yeah. you see. Okay, um, because gangeton is a, just a genre of music. It's just like jazz or hip hop, so they can be dirty or clean. Do you, Doctor Mutra, yourself have a favorite gangeton artist? Uh, unfortunately, no. I think the way they the way they came up and uh, and then there was that we had to fight. I had to block <laughs> my. My, my 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 ears from uh, the some of them even create uh, you know music mentioning my family and so on uh, sometimes oh. i think yeah 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 you, you never heard about one that says uh, uh, and stuff like that and they're looking for attention i have no yeah. time for those uh, kind of people so ideally no i don't have any favorite uh, gangeton and i don't intend to uh it's a genre like you said but it's a, it's a, it's a, there, there are things that you just got to make up your mind mm -hmm. uh, what kind of content you want to consume. I wouldn't recommend it even for my children. <laughs> okay. Do you have a favorite Kenyan artist right now that you're really enjoying their music? I love gospel, of course. Masi Masika is my favorite. She was launching like yes, uh, last night and uh, I was all in. Um, I love Nyashiski's uh, music. Yeah. It's awesome. I love Soul. soul. I mean, I, I, I support musicians. And, and, and obviously, uh, the veteran uh, comedian Churchill and the father of comedy in this country uh, and others who are doing a great job. I work with all of them and I do support them. But in terms of uh, comedy uh, and the clean content, Mchunga uh, and Mtumishi are my all-time favorites. We picked them three years ago when I joined KFCB. I uh, was very new at KFCB. We picked them. We've been working with them. They've never let us down. Those guys are good. They are hilarious. They do clean comedy. Yes. And they, you have no, you don't stand a chance of finding something offensive with them. And so we are supporting them in the best way we can. And now we have reached a point mm -hmm. where we want to launch them, not just supporting them, but for them to be able to support others and become like churching, you know, uh -huh. be able to nurture their own yeah. other, other people other in, the, in, in, in clean content. Yes, yes. Yeah, so so those, are, those are my favorite. Yeah. Okay. Well, now our time is up unfortunately for our conversation but i've had an awesome time speaking with you especially as a veteran journalist i was very nervous last night i was like i have to keep it out tomorrow <laughs> but it's been a great conversation thank you so much um before you go would you like to give people your social media handles and let them know where they can reach you 
Absolutely. I am on uh, Facebook as Ezekiel Mutua. Mm -hmm. I have another fan page, Dr. Ezekiel Mutua, MBS, and uh, on Twitter at Ezekiel Mutua. Awesome. Well, thank Instagram you so much. Instagram is the same, at Ezekiel Mutua. Ah, great. Well then, thank you so much, Dr. Ezekiel Mutua, for joining us on KT and Life and Stars Virtual. Um, guys, thank you for joining in on the conversation. You have heard his Twitter handles. Keep tweeting us using the hashtag KT and Life and Style. Uh, he responds to a lot of tweets. So if you do have any questions, be sure to be appropriate. But Dr. Ezekiel Mutua is very open and he'll be willing to talk to you guys. Thank you so much, Takari. Have a great, great day. It was a pleasure, Susan. Thank you very much. Bye. All right, well, that was it. I am Susan Jaroge. You guys can reach me on my social medias on Sura Common, Sura underscore Common on Instagram. If you type in Sura Common on Twitter and Facebook as well, you should be able to find me. That was a very interesting conversation. He occasionally can be controversial on Twitter, according to what the board chooses to ban or how the board chooses to classify films and music videos. It's been a great conversation. If you have more questions, don't hesitate, like I have said, tweet us using the hashtag KTN Life and Style. Otherwise, KTN Life and Style Virtual continues. It is Jama coming up next with fun music and TikTok videos. It is goodbye from me, Susan Jerome. Ciao.